At Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia, PIX 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball. Today, the Mets play the Atlanta Braves. Well, the Mets road trip began in the land of rock and roll, and it was the Mets bats that provided the power cords. Seven home runs in a three-game series in Cleveland. Then the Mets moved on to the land of liberty, and their bats were ringing out home runs. Twelve home runs in a three-game series, as the Mets won two out of three from the Phillies. Then down in Georgia, the Mets bats rose again. Four home runs in the first two games of this series, 23 in all through the first eight games, and they're even shocking themselves. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Atlanta. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you as the Mets play the final game of their three-game series against Atlanta. Mets are 6-2 and two on this road trip, and they have been hitting home runs in droves. It's been fun to watch. I have not seen a streak like this. 23 home runs over the first eight games here. The Mets are averaging almost six and a half runs per game. Their pitching has only given up two runs or less four times in the eight games. That spells wins, and they're going here for their seventh win and going going home with momentum for a long homestand and a, just a terrific road trip and with the Mets going for the sweep of the series with the Braves they'll have Jacob deGrom on the mound for the first time in 16 days coming back from some soreness in a lat muscle the birth of his son his son's subsequent medical problems Jacob happy to be back on the mound today and for the Braves Aaron Blair one of the players that the Braves got in their trade with Arizona will make his major league debut it's the Mets and the Braves of the Mets trying to finish off Atlanta. All the action coming your way on Pix 11. Starting lineup brought to you by Nissan Shop. Choose Nissan.com. No UN assessment for the second straight day with that big bruise on his leg. He may miss a few more days as well. David Wright getting a scheduled day. Also, Wilmer Flores, Juan Lagares, and Kevin Pluecki all in the lineup as Travis Darno gets the day off as well. Well, here's today's starter, the much highly touted Aaron Blair. Came over in that big trade with Arizona, the former number one pick. Off to a 3-0 start. It threw seven no-hit innings his last start in Gwinnett. Gwinnett. 
Curtis Granderson leads off and takes the pitch high and we're underway so there you can be sure understandably nervous making his major league debut 23 year old who grew up in Las Vegas. And Granderson takes a strike one and one. Well, you can see right now that he's not a hard thrower. The scouting report on him is a middle rotation guy, low risk strike thrower. Granderson greets him with a base hit in the right field. So, yet another leadoff hit for Granderson. That's the fourth straight game that he's led off with a base hit. Well, Gr Grandy has definitely turned it on. There's no question on this road trip. He is in his last seven games hitting at a 355 clip coming in. Mets have done a great job of scoring early on this road trip. We've talked a lot about the home runs. What they've also done is score in the first inning in six of the eight games. And the other two games where they didn't score in the first inning, they got a couple of men on in each of those first innings. So the Mets have been attacking early. With good results. Here's us dribble Cabrera, three for eight in this series, including his first Mets home run last night. And he takes up and away for ball one. Well, the scouting report said that I was low risk strike thrower, 93 to 95 mile per hour fastball. We're seeing 90 right now. It's supposed to have an excellent changeup. So we'll see. Well, he's going to have to establish that fastball to get to the changeup. Granderson at first and nobody out. And Cabrera lines one under right for a base hit. Granderson will go first to third, and the Mets are in business in the opening inning again. First and third, and nobody out. So Cabrera moved up to the two hole with Wright getting the day off and promptly sends Granderson over to third. Well, his ball is not sinking right now, and it's just up in the strike zone, and Granderson right there is going to know he's going to get to third. And it sets it up for your number three hitter. I always thought that number three hole had much more RBI potential than the two hole here. It's the way the game was played for 150 years. Here's Conforto, who's three for eight in this series, top 10 in the National League in on base percentage. Well, talk about being knocked back on your heels. Aaron Blair trying to settle in. Mets have greeted him with back to back hits, and he misses badly with a curveball for ball one. Well, he's got hardly any movement. He's got to be very nervous. His folks are here. Left a ton of passes. He just hoped to get through the first inning. Modified shift on against Conforto. Who fouls back the fastball one and one. Well, as we mentioned, Blair's parents are here. That's Craig on the right, Jan in the middle, his fiance Caitlin to the left. So he is well represented here. 50 tickets left. We mentioned he grew up in Vegas. He went to college at Marshall University. He's a member of the Thundering Herd. It's an odd move from Vegas to West Virginia to go to college. Conforto flies one along the left field line. A long run for Jace Peterson near the line. Diving, and he made the catch. Dropped it on the transfer. Tagging is Granderson. He comes in to score the first run of the game. That is a heck of a play right there by Peterson. This is only Peterson's fourth game in left field this season. A position he had never played professionally until this year. And he lays out, goes into foul territory to catch it. Boy, I tell you what, that's a heck of a play. And you can see the run here. And you got the runner on first, did not advance. You got to be halfway if you're the back runner. So this is uh, just a inning changing play if he, if Blair can get out of this get the get two outs escape with one run so that's how Blair gets his first out it's also how he gives up his first run in the big leagues as Conforto gets credit for a sacrifice fly and for the seventh time in nine games on this road trip the Mets score in the first inning now it looks like the Braves are going to appeal and say that Granderson left too soon I doubt it and a safe call given by the home plate umpire Lance Barksdale who was watching all the way on that play because the ball was hit down the left field line the third base umpire goes out to watch the fielder and the home plate umpire's responsibility is watching to see if the runner leaves too soon. It's almost like relay plays you can see Granderson has no reason to leave early with the outfielder uh, laying out like that. And the ruling on that drop was that he dropped it on the transfer. John Tumpain, the third base umpire, was right on top of that. So a lot going on there. That would have been a foul ball if rolled dropped. Mm -hmm. So here's Duda, and he takes well outside as 
Blair is all over the place in this first inning as you can readily expect. Blair threw seven hitless innings in his last triple A start struck out ten against Durham on Tuesday but off to a very diff different beginning in his first big league start today. Just 23 years old first round pick by Arizona back in 2013. Due to pops one foul and it's one and one. Well, the uh, the Braves got a real haul when they traded Shelby Miller to Arizona, and you know, by all indications, they got an enormous amount back. They got the top two prospects in the Arizona system: Dansby Swanson, who was the number one pick in the draft, a shortstop from last year, the number one prospect, and Blair, the number two prospect. Good change up. There's the one they were talking about. Blair, one and two. Blair was also a first round pick in 2013, 36th all overall. And they also got Ender in CRT in that deal. He had a tremendous year for Arizona last year, and he's hurt right now with a hamstring injury, but he'll be the everyday center fielder for the Braves when he gets back. One, two to Duda, and it's low and in. It looked like a lopsided deal in favor of the Braves even before Shelby Miller, who went the other way in that deal. Got off to a horrific start for the Diamondbacks. Well, he got pulled in his last start after walking four batters in a row in the third inning. And they were talking about maybe skipping him a start. Duda flares one foul. We'll take a look at the defense. It's brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. That would be your. Bravo defense. We just talked about Jace Peterson. A little more speed than Kelly Johnson. Beats his fourth start in left field. Daniel Castro at shortstop. Only his second start at shortstop. But know what that tells you? This is a team in rebuild. Mm -hmm. Well, it is interesting. They play Peterson in the outfield and Johnson at second since Kelly has much more experience in the outfield and Peterson has been a second baseman. Well, the thought was that Peterson was faster, covered more ground, and it came up uh, spades right there in that diving catch. Yeah, Kelly Johnson probably doesn't get to that ball. Three and two now to Duda with Neil Walker waiting on deck. Lucas one for eight in this series. See if Cabrera runs here with three and two and one out. As dribble goes and Duda strikes out on the changeup and Cabrera is tagged out on the strike him out throw him out double play. So Aaron Blair picks up his first major league strikeout the Braves turn it into two and the Mets settle for one in the opening inning. Well, he certainly has a good changeup seen that early in this game. Good throw by Pierzynski and Cabrera dead duck at second base. Jacob DeGrom takes the mound with a 1 0 lead when we come back. This lineup of cars and SUVs you'll find at your local Hyundai dealer aren't just new, they're better. By MT Bank, what's important to you is important at MT Bank. Learn more at mtb.com slash meet us. By Infinity, visit your local Infinity retailer for a test drive. By Raymore and Flanagan, furnishing your style. By Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and by ChevyOffers.com. 
Here's the Braves lineup brought to you by Nissan. Shop choose Nissan. Dot com. AJ Przinsky back in the lineup looking for his 2000th career hit today. Jace Peterson gets his first start of the series. He's already introduced himself. And the Mets reintroduced themselves to Jacob deGrom, his second start of the year. And Nick Markakis fouls back his first fastball. Yeah, you remember his, sec his first start of the year way back on Friday, April 8th, where he went six strong innings against the Phillies in a 7 2 win, gave up one run. That was the Mets' home opener. And to this date DeGrom's only start and he threw just 76 pitches in that game he left with a little tightness in his lap the Mets skipped him a start then his son Jackson was born he went home and then Jackson had some trouble breathing that's all been resolved now and Jake finally back to work and Fordo comes in to catch Marquecas's fly ball one away interesting between innings Freddie Gonzalez called the crew chief Greg Gibson over and he was hot under the collar about something. Not sure exactly what was concerning him. I haven't the slightest clue. So one out and nobody on. Now Daniel Castro is playing shortstop today after playing second base the first two games of the series and he takes a slider for a strike. Well certainly DeGrom's Lat has had plenty of plenty of rest and time to heal. Into right field, a base hit for Castro, who swung the bat very well in this series. That's his fourth hit in nine at bats, and it gives the Braves a one-out base run. And a look at the Mets defense, and it's brought to you by your local Hyundai. Try Honda dealers. Couple guys in Flores gets a start at third base and boy does he need some at bats. One hit on the season for, for Wilmer. Powecki, of course, has done a good job spotting for Darno. So a one out hit for Castro, and now DeGrom will take on Freddie Freeman, who broke out with a couple of hits last night. He got two hits, both on 0 2 pitches a double to right that drove in a run, and a soft single to left, both of those against Steven Matz. Freeman needed something good to happen. He's still struggling down at 190 for the year. He's just not getting the barrel through. Lifts this one to left. Pretty well hit. Conforto, though, should have plenty of room. And that's the second out. And back to first goes Castro. This is a big ballpark, folks. Uh, one of the in today's park, so many small band boxes. Turner Field is one of the bigger ones. This is beyond fair. This is a pitcher's park. 380 in left center field. 390 in right center field. It's a big park. Well, when they built this park, the Braves had the best pitching in the world, and they built it to suit their staff. I mean, 390. It was pretty much the Astrodome was 396 in the gaps. Here's Adonis Garcia, the third baseman and cleanup hitter. He's had a good series, going four for nine. This is not going to be a long day for Jacob DeGrom. He threw 70 some pitches in a simulated game earlier this week. The Mets will probably cap him at about 85 today. So they'll need some bullpen. Key is for him to be efficient early in the game to be able to get himself through five or six innings. Well, he's got to be tickled to death to be out there on the mound. He's got to be like a horse that's been in the barn way too long, wants to get out and gallop. And he's got a, a new viewer. His yes. son Jackson, he told his wife, make sure he's awake. I want him to watch me pitch. So, hi, Jackson. Oh, it, it, Glad it, you it could tune in. You guys want the replay. Off the glove of DeGrom and into center field, a base hit for Garcia. And so the Braves have two men on in the opening inning. And Garcia continues to pile up the base hits in this series, now five for ten. Ole by the umpire. Up. His pitches have been up early, Gary. He's been a little rusty. You can expect that from DeGrom. More than a little rusty. So now A.J. Pruszynski, who's on the cusp of a little personal history, he had three hits on Friday night to get him to 1,999. There have only been nine catchers in history who have reached the 2,000 hit plateau, and Pruszynski trying to become the 10th. And he fouls off the curveball for strike one. Well, he's going to get it. I mean, nice little medal on his uh, 
uniform. Yeah, nice cap to what has been a long career for Pierzynski. He's the oldest catcher in the game now at 39. And have a tremendous year for the Braves last year, hitting 300. Rom misses one and one. Kelly Johnson waiting on deck. Rom trying to pitch out of a first inning circumstance after the Mets handed him a run on the top of the inning. And Pierzynski goes after the curveball, one and two. I think this was a change gear out in front. And a good one. Bright sunny day in Atlanta. Temperature right around 75 degrees. Nice crowd gathered for the final game of this series. One two coming. Punched in the air. Back goes Cabrera. He's got it. And that retires the side. So DeGrom gives up a couple of hits. Gets Pierzynski out to keep the lead. One nothing after one. Atlanta, so there must be traffic. Yes, and we're going to show you the keys of the game. It's brought to you by your Hyundai themes of the game. Brought to you by Hyundai. And going deep, well, the 23 home runs have accounted for over 68 percent of the Mets' runs on this road trip. Degrom coming back has just been awesome his whole career. Look at that ERA, fourth lowest. And Cabrera has just done a terrific job since joining this ball club. Neil Walker takes low as he leads off the second inning. Walker with six of those 23 home runs that the Mets have hit on this road trip, seven for the year, tying the most he's ever hit in a calendar month. Well, it's not going to keep up. If this pace is just torrid, it's just one of those streaks that you're going to ride it as far as you can. And you know, when the Mets are going to score six and a half runs a game, they're going to win a lot of ball games. I'll tell you how hot Walker's been with the home run ball as he grounds that one toward the middle and he gets it through for a base hit. So Walker just continues to rake and the Mets have a leadoff hit for the second straight inning. It's a little better sinker by Blair right there but too much of the plate Walker able to handle it. So this is how hot Walker has been right last night Neil Walker's home run was the 100th of his major league career. And Neil thought it was the 99th. He lost track. He's been hitting so many home runs recently, he didn't realize it was his 100th home run. Well, hopefully, someone got him his ball. <laughs> Here's Wilmer Flores, just one for 17 to start the year, getting the start at third base today with David Wright getting the day off. As this season develops, I think we're going to see more and more of this. David sitting every third game or so. If there's no off day. Well, 
I think you're going to see it more on day games when you can too. Uh, they remember Davy Johnson did that with Gary Carter. Uh, Gary never caught uh, with his knees, never caught a day game followed by uh, before night game, at, at followed by a night game, or vice versa. Excuse me. Well, the Mets are going to play the Reds three games starting tomorrow night. Then they get an off day Thursday, and after that they have 17 straight games without a day off. So it's going to be a challenge to see how often David Wright can stay in Terry Collins lineup. Well they had six off days in April Gary. A lot of off days. Right, so they were due for one of these stretches. Flores scoots one down to Freeman gets the out at second the return by Garcia in time for the three six three double play Castro I should say in the middle of the double play. Well, Freddie's got a nice glove, and this is a play he should make. Gets rid of it quick. That's Taylor made double play. Castro hasn't played much shortstop at the big league level, but played a ton in the minor leagues, so it's certainly something he's familiar with. So two out and nobody on. Now Kevin Plawecki, who gets his fifth start today with Darno sitting day game after a night game. And the curveball from Blair in for a strike. Well, Pawecki got the big game winning hit against the fi final game of that to homestand against Miami. It salvaged a game out of that series from the Marlins. Kevin's three for 13 to start the year. So Aaron Blair trying to settle in got greeted by back to back hits and a sack fly first three batters he faced in the big leagues. He's a big kid. I'll say. 6'4, 250, they have him in the book. From Las Vegas, Nevada, 23 years of age. A youngster. We mentioned he pitched for the Thundering Herd of Marshall. Two most prominent players to come out of that program Rick Reed, of course, did great work for the Mets, and Jeff Montgomery, who was a very good closer for Kansas City. Popped up in the middle of the infield. And Kelly Johnson shading his eyes, reels it in to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the second in Atlanta, one nothing New York. TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch at every out of market game live in HD and over 400 supported devices. MLB.TV Premium includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Jacob DeGrom worked around a couple of hits in the first inning. Now takes a 1 0 lead into the bottom of the second to face former teammate Kelly Johnson. 
Kelly one for four in this series and he takes up and away for ball one. Johnson just five for thirty three to start the season. His third go round with the Braves who originally drafted him. That's got him from the Braves last summer and he re-signed with Atlanta after the year. In fact the Braves have five players on their roster who left. Went to another team and then came back. One and two to Kelly. And that doesn't even include Tyler Flowers who they drafted never played for them. Went to the White Sox and came back this year. So they've got a ton of players who they're familiar with. Pulled down to Duda. Who handles it to retire Johnson one away. Let's go inside baseball with Steve Gelb. Steve. Gary for the Dodgers new signed rookie Kenta Maeda continues to be really really stellar yesterday first start ever at Coors Field he went into the sixth inning with a no hitter would be the first person to do that since Kevin Millwood did it back in 2012 ended up with six and a third no run ball eight strikeouts yet again he's now the first pitcher since at least 1930 whose first four major league starts. Peterson flies out first four major league starts where he's given up one run only first person potentially ever to do such a feat the Mets will be looking to see Kenton Maeda when they go to Los Angeles in a few weeks and potentially the guy on the mound will be facing him and Jacob DeGrom that's how it's setting up right now. I'm sure that'll be quite a wake up call for them Steve. <laughs> oh. Oh. Maeda has got a very interesting contract. The Dodgers signed him to an eight year deal for about twenty five million dollars but he's got so many incentives in the deal that that twenty five million can get up to a hundred million if he pitches effectively. It is just incredible the amount of uh, moolah being thrown around. But oh it's but, but it's really a, a unique contract yes. because you know most contracts in the big leagues are not paid for, for performance but his very clearly is. Alex Smith hitting eighth in the order, one for four in this series. Well, in a year, the Dodgers have had some injuries to starting pitchers. Maeda has been a, a godsend for them and has helped them get off to an 11 and 7 start. And the ground falls behind the speedy Malik Smith, three and one, with the pitcher Blair on deck. Jacobs fastball sitting around 92 which is where it was in his first start against the Phillies down from last year when he averaged 95 on his fastball. Alex Smith drives one out to right field Granderson back and he reels it in at the edge of the warning track. Alex Smith hitting it about as far as he's hit one in the major leagues. But the ballpark and Granderson equal to it one two three for DeGrom one nothing Mets after two. A blue sky afternoon in Atlanta. 
And first time starter Aaron Blair will face the number eight hitter Juan Lagares. Juan continues to swing the bat very well three for six in this series including a triple last night in the ninth inning. Juan's been using the opposite field been going up the middle and into right center field. So the fact that Lagares is swinging the bat so well makes it a little less painful that Cespedes has been out of the lineup the last couple of days. Cespedes re aggravated that bruise on his thigh on Friday night on the slide and it would not be surprising if he missed a few more days. Garris lays off and stopped it in time two and one. Jacob well, DeGrom on deck. With the Mets winning and the offense clicking on all cylinders it gives Terry Collins the op the opportunity to take a little extra time with Cespedes. Cespedes will probably see the Mets team doctors when the Mets get back to New York tomorrow and reassess exactly where he's at but it's very painful right now uh, Terry at one point last night when the game was close asked Cespedes to see if he was available to pinch hit and after trying to get himself ready realized quickly he could not Lagares draws a walk first one he's drawn this year and the first given up by Blair in the big leagues. There's your affinity health plan injury report and that is the situation with Cespedes. Well, it has been a amazing road trip for the Metsies. Rom has to bunt and bunts it foul. Degrom, an excellent hitter. Another starter that can swing the bat and also a really good bunter. Watch how low he gets when he squares up here. Bends at the knees, bat level out in front. Very important to have the bat out in front. So what's the um, what's the advantage of bending your knees that deep? Well, you're in a position now you can bend if the pitch uh, 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 sinks. You can bend your knees with it and keep your bat level. And he gets the butt down. Blair will have to go to first with it. Nicely done by DeGrom. 1 4 on the sacrifice, and Lagares now at second. Had a little backspin on this. Look how low he is. The level bat out in front. And he got a little, uh, little English on it. So if it's an advantage to get that load to bunt, why doesn't everybody do it that way? Some people can't bunt or they don't work at it. But if they got lower, maybe they could bunt. That's basic fundies here. Okay. Here's Granderson who had a base hit to right field and scored the only run of this game. And he takes the fastball for a strike. Blair getting it up to 93 after sitting at 89 90 in the first inning. He may be getting himself settled in now. Pops one inside, and it's one and one. We mentioned Tuesday, seven hitless innings in his last outing. They limited him to 87 pitches. Otherwise, who knows, he might have thrown a nine inning no hitter. Granderson pops one up. In comes Markakis. Now that's the second out. So two out. Lagara still at second. And now is Dribble Cabrera coming up. Cabrera single to right field his first time up. And Cabrera is a perfect hitter. He's a switch hitter. Better left hand hitter. More pop from the left side. But a threat from the right side. He's a perfect guy that you can hit seventh in your order, which Terry normally does, but you can also put him up on the two hole. There's a nice curveball right there. And 
another curveball grounded out to Johnson at second. And that retires the side. So Blair gets around a leadoff walk. And that sends us to the bottom of the third with the Mets still up one up. Piedmont Park here in Atlanta. You know it's the largest park in in the city here. It's not quite Central Park, but it's you know it's nice. Aaron Blair's first big league plate appearance. He was four for 40 in his minor league career with one home run. And he hit in Double A two years ago. And his folks looking on as he takes a strike from Degrom and it's 0-2. And DeGrom makes quick work of his opposite number for his first strike out of the day. There's the slider that we've come to know and love from DeGrom. He's a little rusty. He snapped that one off nice. So one out and nobody on, and Jake starts his second time through the batting order. Nick Markakis, who flied out to left his first time up. Jake was down in Florida and tending to uh, his wife and his baby. The baby was in the hospital in Daytona Beach, and he would take the the two-hour drive down to Port St. Lucie to uh, to throw his bullpen sessions, his simulated games. And I remember while it was going on, Terry Collins said, "I, I can't believe that he's doing this. You know that that it's got to be so difficult for him to to pull himself away and 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 still get his work in like this." And Jake said yesterday that the drive back and forth is actually cathartic for him. Yes. It just it gave him a chance to decompress a little bit and concentrate on something else other than the health of his son, which was obviously top of mind all the time. Marcakis goes around in the half swing, and DeGrom's got back to back strikeouts. Well, it's the game you love to play, and you've worked out your whole life and that's a great diversion too was to get on the mound for Jacob in Jacob's case and to be able to focus on your profession what's at hand and get a break from that tension and anxiety well, we starting to settle into a rhythm here in the third inning. Facing Daniel Castro, who had a base hit to right field his first time up. Well, the, the best news of all, of course, is that young Jackson is doing well. He's been home for six days now with no repeat of the apnea problems that had them so concerned. And Castro's got himself another hit. 
So Castro now with five hits and ten at bats in this series, a two out single. Fastball down the pipe. A lot of singles for the Braves. They had 10 hits in each of the first two games of this series. So they've got 23 hits now in the series, two doubles. The only extra base hits. This is a team that has now gone 12 games plus today since their last home run. As Grom makes Freeman move his feet, ball one. Coming into today's game, 487 plate appearances by the Braves without a homer. So it's up to 498 now. It's getting ready to go over the 500 mark. That's a long time. And think about how many home runs the Mets have hit in the interim. The Mets for the season have now hit 25 home runs. The Braves have hit three. It's the fewest home runs the Braves have hit to this point in a season since 1937 when they were the Boston Braves. That's two cities ago. Again, DeGrom comes inside to Freeman, two and one. Fastball sitting right at 92 for Jacob. He says he's not concerned about that, and it's been the case really since the beginning of spring training that his velocity has been down. It certainly didn't affect him in his first start of the year against the Phillies. Back to DeGrom, who fields his position extremely well, and he throws out Freeman to end the inning. So a hit and one left, and DeGrom is through three. Mets have a one nothing lead. Baseball is brought to you by Dunkin Donuts America runs on Dunkin. The more strikeouts the Mets record the more you save every strikeout thrown by a Mets pitcher against the Phillies and Braves saves you one percent off select tickets to the upcoming homestand April 25th through May 4th so far including today the Mets have recorded 54 strikeouts meaning fans will receive at least a 54 percent discount. Wow. For more information visit Mets.com slash strikeouts. Michael Conforto goes after the first pitch changeup from Aaron Blair to start the fourth. Well, Met pitchers have been striking out batters at a a prodigious rate. In addition to all the uh, the power hitting, the Mets have had plenty of power pitching, which you would have expected. In fact, the last six games, Met pitchers have struck out 67 batters and pitched to a 2.10 ERA. The Mets have never had a six game stretch in their history with that many strikeouts and that low an ERA. So it's been lost amidst all the tremendous power hitting, but the Mets have been pitching as anticipated, too. 
Well I mentioned uh, that the Mets on this road trip of um, the eight games so far played for them two runs or less. And the fifth one was a three run game so they've been pitching and when pop up and shallow left. Tremendous play by play by me Gary I've been I was uh, I've been I, I sit here and I try to mimic you just take over the reins anytime you want. It's like it's like one of those driver's ed cars. You're sitting in the uh, in the instructor's seat. Yes. Anytime you want to hit that brake, steer <laughs> that car, just take over. <laughs> like like the co-pilot. <laughs> Not the autopilot, just the co-pilot. Like Kareem. <laughs> Lucas Duda struck out his first time up. Was there some larger point you wanted to make uh, while you were doing your play by play? Well, if you're scoring almost six and a half runs a game and your pitchers are giving up three runs or less, that's a successful road trip. Big shift on Duda here in right field as usual. They have the third baseman Garcia close to home. Maybe thinking Duda might want to lay one down. Well, you're seating half the left side of the infield. So he's moved back now. Just kind of, he's like a rover also over there. 3 and 0. Oh. And there's a strike. Well, usually after the first strike, they'll take that third baseman and put him back in the shortstop position, and that's where Garcia is going now. Correct. Figuring once Duda gets a strike, he's less likely to try and lay down a bunt. Lines one out of left center field, and that's down for a base hit. Smith gets over to cut it off, and Lucas Duda has a one-out single. The Mets' fourth hit of the day. Good hitting sinker. So you know you got a sinker ball because you faced him already once and you know that the ball is going to sink so it starts down the outer half of the plate you've got to anticipate that sink to the outside corner. This is a day when the Mets are facing a starter who's making his major league debut and in talking to the folks in the clubhouse they didn't have any video on him which is very unusual. They had never faced him in spring training. All they had was a written scouting report. So. In that kind of a circumstance, how much conversation is there at bat by at bat in the dugout when you're seeing a guy for the first time? I guarantee you, everybody crowded around Curtis Granderson and said, oh, "What? All the left-hand hitters? What's he got? How hard's he throw? Is he the sinker? What does this changeup do?" I guarantee it. And but you know what? When you face a pitcher you haven't faced before, it's almost like a September caller. Care, you know, you you don't know what they got. I mean, back in my days, we had no idea when they came up what they threw. So you went up there, and I always pretended like I had two strikes on me. Well, I did. Nice stop by Blair, right on target, and he turns the double play to end the inning. Well handled by the big right-hander, and his family likes what they see. Still one nothing New York going to the bottom of the fourth.
Sunday May 1st watch the Mets take on the Giants at 110 the first 15,000 fans in attendance will receive a pair of Curtis Granderson baseball socks courtesy of East Coast Power and Gas plus all kids can run the bases after the game in the Mr. Met Dash presented by Northwell Health for tickets visit Mets.com slash family Sundays. Big swing by Donis Garcia and he grounds one foul to start the home fourth. Garcia had a base hit to center field his first time up five for ten in this series up to 317 for the year. A good change up by DeGrom to get ahead 0 and 2. Jacob struck out his first two batters in the last inning. He's given up three singles. No walks. Up the middle and Garcia's got another hit. An 0 2 curveball from DeGrom and Garcia's two for two. The Grom is showing a little bit of the rust here. It's a little hanger right there, right down the middle. So the first time the Braves have had their leadoff hitter on today. And now AJ Pruszynski, who popped up to short his first time up. Second start of the year for DeGrom, who was masterful in the postseason last year. Nub to shortstop, might be two. Cabrera takes it to the bag and turns it over. 6 6 3 double play. Knew who he had running, knew he had time with Pruszynski going down the line, and made the play easily. Well, DeGrom comes inside and jams Pruszynski. And again, the very steady glove of Cabrera did nothing but impress me with his defensive skills out there. So just like that, two out and nobody on. Now Kelly Johnson, who grounded out his first time up. Talking about DeGrom in the postseason last year, he was probably never better than he was in game one against the Dodgers. And probably was never grittier than he was in game five of that series. When he just didn't yep. seem to have anything, looked like he was going to be out of the game in the first inning and was able to muddle his way through. But it was no surprise to us because we've seen him, you know, go out there and struggle in some of his starts. Johnson shoots one toward the middle. Walker on the backhand, the jump toss on target, side retired. Mets middle infielders looking sharp as usual. Those two guys have done a terrific job, Walker and Cabrera. Walker making that one look easy. Still one nothing Mets.
fifth inning in Atlanta. Mets with a one nothing lead. Facing first time starter Aaron Blair. Wilmer Flores leads off. And Flores oh. takes a curveball for a strike. Wilmer grounded into a double play his first time up. Kevin Pluecki, Juan Ligares to follow. Blair gave up a run in the first inning, but has settled in nicely since then. He's gotten a couple of double play balls, including one he started himself. With his size and the fact that he's not overpowering, big bodied guy, remind you a little bit of Aaron Harang? A little bit. Totally different. Windups, but same build. Right. Shallow center, Malik Smith comes in to retire Flores one away. Kind of steps back towards first base. Almost turns the back to the hitters. And there's your sinker. Well, there's the Braves pitching coach Roger McDowell who has Worked with some uh, outstanding pitchers here in Atlanta and had a lot of success, but now with the Braves going back to the drawing board to try and retool this franchise, now he gets to work with young pitchers and Blair, one of the first to arrive. That smacked in the air to left field off the bat of Ploiecki, and Peterson is there to grab it, two out. And of course, they've got a tradition of Pretty good pitchers here in Atlanta. Three Hall of Famers who work together on the same staff Messers, Smoltz, Glavin, and Maddox, left to right. Two of the three brought over via the trades. John Shearholz, of course. Well, they got Smoltz in the deal for Doyle Alexander with from Detroit. Maddox was a free agent, and Glavin they drafted. Maddox, of course, with started with the Cubs. Well, Maddox won 355. Glavin 305 won his 300th as a Met. Don't forget. And Smoltz did it both as a starter and as a reliever. Well, and don't forget, Smoltz went to the bullpen and he might have had 300 wins if he didn't go to the bullpen easily. <laughs> so that says it all. All such models of consistency. Maddox and Glavin were able to stay healthy their entire career. Smoltz not so fortunate. He had all sorts of elbow problems that he had to work around. Remember when he started throwing a knuckleball because his arm hurt so much? I forgot that. And he was very inventive. And well, I faced all three when they came up, and the most impressive one, and the, uh, the least amount I faced. Was John Smoltz. He got my attention. Well, he had the best stuff of the three. Yes. I think you'd have to say that. Yep, he was power stuff. Uh, he threw me a breaking ball, the first breaking ball I saw off of him, and it went, it was a hard one, a lot of velocity, a lot of spin, sharp breakdown, and it was in the dirt. And I said, oh, okay, if this kid ever gets it over with his fastball, he's going to be a good one. Came up to the Braves in the 88 season. From the Diamondbacks and the Shelby Miller trade at the front edge of what the Braves hope will be a starting pitching renaissance. Magaris hits one out to right. And Marcakis is there. Three fly ball outs for Blair at a 1 2 3 top of the fifth. Halfway through on a Sunday afternoon in Atlanta, 1 0 New York.
Atlanta. Jacob DeGrom and the Mets with a 1 0 lead. On a beautiful day here in Atlanta. Slight breeze, the flag blowing out to right field. As you see over the center field scoreboard, just a glorious day. Well, it's been a nice return to action for Jacob DeGrom so far. We mentioned at the outset that the Mets were hoping to hold him to 85 pitches, and we were wondering how far he might get. Well, just 45 pitches through the first four innings, and facing the lower third of the order in the fifth, as Jace Peterson leads off. So, if he can hold his form, he might be able to get through six with no problem. Ball and a strike to Peterson, who fly to center his first time up. You know, the 47 pitches, 35 strikes. But still, he's a little rusty. He's given up four singles today. But I think, all in all, after missing all this time, splendid. 16 days since his first outing of the season and the home opener against the Phillies. One two coming and he lines one over shortstop and that'll be a base hit for Peterson. So there's the fifth single of the afternoon for the Braves. Well that's what the Braves uh, are good at. Not a lot of extra base hits. Good pitch. That's a backdoor breaking ball. Nice hitting by Peterson. Remember last year early in the season how good Peterson was. Got off to a great start playing second base most days for the Braves and then really tailed off the second half and now a part time player. Here's Malik Smith hitting eighth in the order. Smith had one deep to right field that Granderson had to go back and grab. He'll always watch out for the bunt with Smith up, even with a pitcher on deck. Well, he had a terrific year last year in the minor leagues. Uh, split the time in double A and triple A. Hit 340 in triple A. Stole a lot of bases. He's a youngster. And he, I think he's a little swamped. And you know what? I mean, we talked about this. When you've got a team that's not hitting and you're a young kid, it has more of a negative effect on the youngster than it does the veteran for obvious reasons. Well, Malik Smith would not even be in the major leagues right now were it not for the injury to Ender Inciarte, who uh, pulled a hamstring three games into the season. They're looking for him to come back sometime in May. Ciarte, a terrific fielder who had an outstanding year for Arizona last year, but they just had too many outfielders. Funny thing about it is, they had an abundance of outfielders in Arizona, and then AJ Pollock, the best of them, gets hurt right on the eve of the season, is going to miss at least half the year. So, had they known that, they probably never would have traded Ciarte. That's the Joker in the deck. Yep. One and two to Smith. It's your Chevy high speed pitch. DeGrom has topped that at 94 miles an hour. Aaron Blair at 93. Blair will bat next. One two coming. And the curveball is down. Two and two. Well, they learned right away. The Mets caught up, caught on to. Smith swinging a lot of breaking balls in the dirt. If you remember the first game, uh, Harvey kind of ate him up with curveballs in the dirt. I'm sorry, it wasn't Harvey, it was Bastardo as well as Reed that struck him out with breaking stuff in the dirt. 2 2 to Malik Smith, and he lifts this one to left. And can forward to easing back. Back to first base goes Peterson, one away. The road ahead brought to you by Ford. Mets return home after the game today to begin a nine game homestand. Three with the Reds starting tomorrow night. Then, after an off day, the Giants are in for the weekend. And then the Mets see the Braves again for the following three. Then the Mets have an 11 game road trip to the West Coast in Colorado. They go to San Diego for four, LA for four, and Colorado for three. A lot of longer road trips on the Mets schedule this year. Finishing off a nine game road trip today. You've never minded those long road trips. You'd rather, if you're going to go out west, you want to bang out three cities. Get it, get it done. You get used to the time. It's 
a more difficult traveling back home. It's always easier to go out and play that first game on the West Coast traveling west. But coming back, boy, it, it takes a 48 hours for you to get your body back and sink when you've been on West when you've been on the West Coast time, like the old days when uh, we only had the, the, the two divisions and you do San Francisco, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Well, I agree. I, I remember a couple of years ago the Mets played interleague against the American League West and they made five separate trips yep. out west and that was just a killer. It is. Uh, I'd rather do that in fewer trips. Push bunt down to Duda thinks about second but settles for first. Well and gets the out three four on the sacrifice. An interesting point Doug DeSensei is the former third baseman for the Orioles and the Angels told me that the Yankees when he was with the Angels they'd always play the first game they travel back east. He said the first game we'd play great and then it was a weekend series. Steinbrenner would always have a day game on the Saturday the second day and we would just be have to get up early and be dragging and we get our fanny kicked. Interesting. Those day games on Saturday. <laughs> Here's Nick Markakis who's flat out and struck out 0 for 2. Day games every Sunday, Keith. Mm -hmm. Unless the ESPN comes calling and uh, then you're off. Well, I'm guilty of that because <laughs> I was the player rep when that was done with the negotiated with the ownership. Um, and that was a big deal. Um, a lot of the players didn't want to have night games and there was a big discussion about it and Marvin pretty much said that it was just too much money to go into pension right. and uh, all that so um, that decision was okayed by by the consensus by all of us. Arcakis hits it hard through the hole of base hit. Peterson around third trying to score Granderson's throw comes in and the Braves tie the game at one. Nick Markakis has been absolute money with runners in scoring position. Now 10 for 17 in RBI spots, and he drives in his 14th run of the year to tie it. Well, he is a professional hitter here. Came over from the Orioles, and this is not a grand throw right there from Curtis. And with two outs, you should score on this. Too much of the plate down. Nice hitting. So DeGrom finally cracks here in the fifth. And now faces Daniel Castro, who's already two for two. So a leadoff hit for Peterson. The bunt executed by the pitcher Blair. And that set the stage for Marcakis to drive in the tying run. First run of the game for the Braves brought to you by Dunkin Donuts America runs on Duncan. We would have highlighted the first run of the game for the Mets but. It's a we, day game we had some technical difficulties. It's Chinatown Jake. <laughs> yeah, <that's it>. <laughs> <laughs> One and two to Castro. It's funny that line's been invoked. How many times on this road trip. Going back to your Cleveland days. One of the you know, that character actor who made that statement to Jack Nicholson of course in that famous movie uh, the terrific movie Chinatown. Mm -hmm. I can't think of his name. But he had the line of the movie. Played uh, Jake Gittis's partner. Uh, Mr. Gitz. Gitz. <laughs> well that's how John Houston. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Mr. Gitz. <laughs> and Roman Polanski made a. Uh, a, 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 an appearance. He, he slid his Cam nose. Cameo. The, right, right, right. He was the uh, the thug. Yes. That was a terrific movie. Faye Dunaway. Well, one of the great actresses. Curveball bounce foul. So he's an artist. And that was a lot of uh, history in that, uh, based on how they were running out the 
the, the, the uh, orchard, the orange groves were up in San Fernando Valley and they diverting their water so they can build all the, there was a lot of corruption going on. All the water wars in Southern California. One two coming to Castro, low and away, two and two. So this has been a little more laborious inning for DeGrom. We talked about his pitch count coming into the inning being at 45, with a cap probably at 85 today. And this has been the most pitches he's had to throw in any, any inning. Two two coming. Mm. Breaks his bat. DeGrom can't get it, but slows it down too much for Cabrera to make a play. And everybody's safe. One that Jake probably would have been best off leaving alone. Tried to make a swipe at it. And instead, Castro has his third hit of the day. He saws him off with a boring fastball in belt high. He's such an athlete. And he does a little reverse there. Mistake. But that's a reactive play right there. Well, he's such a good fielder. He thinks he can get everything. He uh, has a chance maybe to win a gold glove one of these days with his athletic ability on the mound. But that one cost him. And now he'll have to face Freddie Freeman with two men on. Arcakis, who drove in the tying run, now represented the lead run at second. And Castro, who's three for three, is on first. Seven hits now against DeGrom, all singles. And now he'll face Freeman, who was handled so far. Freddie has flied to left and had a comeback, a roll for two. He had a better at bat his last at bat, Gary. That's but three infielders on the right side against Freeman. And Freddie hits another comebacker. DeGrom handles this one cleanly, and that retires the side. Braves get even on Marquecas's head after five. 1-1. One, one. Watch two young left handed hitters, one who's really established himself in the game, another one who is just starting to, Freddie Freeman and Michael Conforto. And we'd like to compare. Look at the horizontal bat parallel to the ground of Freeman, much more pronounced. But their hands watch a little more of a hitch in Freeman. And also, Freeman hides his, when, on his take back, brings it into his body a little more. Where Conforto goes straight back and look at the contact here pretty much the same but more tucked that left elbow of Conforto near the body. So pretty much the same both guys eyes on the ball. One hit a ground ball the other one hit a fly ball. Both were outs. <laughs> so they're even. <laughs> and there it is.
Jacob DeGrom leading off in the sixth inning against Aaron Blair. Well, the Mets had a chance to really get Blair early in that first inning. They had him first and third, nobody out. First two hitters singling. And they just couldn't get but one run across. Jace Peterson made a diving catch in foul territory for a sack fly that brought in a run. As a nice snag by Blair using all of his six foot five. And he retires to Grom one away. Well, it's the final year at Turner Field, and every day when the game is official, they're tearing down the number of games remaining. And Leo Pisoni, the celebrated former pitching coach of the Braves, well, doing he, the honors today. He had that great pitching staff, and every they had a nice bullpen too. That bullpen was very much overlooked because of that Hall of Fame starting rotation. They had some trouble at times finding guys to close games for them, I and mean, they had Alejandro Pena early. In their run, then Mark Wallers later on. But bullpen sometimes was an area of concern. And we know that Mark Wallers never recovered from that hanging slider he Ooh. threw in the World Series at Yankee Jim Stadium. Lairin, so oh, never recovered from that. Another closer and a big spot that just completely collapsed. I think of Needon Fuhrer. Was one with Jack Clark's home run. He never recovered from that. Donnie uh, Moore. Ozzie Smith took him deep. Pulled down the line of foul ball. Donnie Moore giving up the. Uh, Donnie Moore, yes. The, the Angels. 86 to the Red Sox. Right. Now the 95 Braves were the only one in that 14 year run of division titles who were able to go the distance. And they've got the pennants up there to show for it, but only one World Series flag in 95. Anderson lays off and he stopped in the time three and one. Curtis scored the Mets only run back in the first inning. And there's ball four and Granderson's on. Second walk given up by Blair. Well Curtis has yet to attempt a stolen base and if ever there was a time to maybe try to sneak one. This would be it. How about hit and run with these pair? This pair. You can with Cabrera. I mean, Terry talks all the time about how we don't really have the guys to steal bases. We don't really have hit and run guys. But if you're going to have a hit and run guy, this would figure to be the one. With Cabrera hitting in the two hole. Normally you've got David Wright hitting second. You're not going to play hit and run with him. Cabrera 61 at bats this year, only 11 strikeouts. And you've got a rookie pitcher on the mound. You don't really know what his move is like. You don't know if he gets discombobulated if you put people in motion. Ball and a strike to Cabrera. And so far, Aaron Blair has acquitted himself well. Which shouldn't come as a huge surprise. Aaron Blair is the sixth Braves pitcher to make his major league debut with a start against the Mets, and four of the previous five got a win. Going back to Larry McWilliams in 1978, John Smoltz made his debut against the Mets and won in 88. David Need in 1992, and then last year Matt Whistler pitched a gem of a game against the Mets here last June. To win his major league debut. Look at the flag, complete turnaround. It was blowing out to right field early in the game, and now it's did a complete shift to left. Cabrera pulls one into right field for a base hit. Granderson will go first to third. Second time Cabrera's done that today with Granderson at first base, pulling a base hit into right field to get Granderson over to third base. Bolt situational hitting. He's two for two in that situation. The first inning did the same thing. And uh, maybe an observation from Terry Collins. Roger McDowell goes out to the mound to talk to Blair. 
And looks like the Braves bullpen is going to get busy. Alexia Gondo is going to start to throw. There he is. So Blair, who threw 87 pitches in his last minor league start, is at 75 today. And he's got a big out to get with first and third and one out. Michael Conforto coming up. And the many Mets fans in the crowd here at Turner Field trying to get a Let's Go Mets chant going. Oh, another RBI situation for that three hole set up nicely by Cabrera both times. Conforto drove in the Mets run with a sacrifice fly in the first. Then he flied out in the fourth. Mets now with a run on five hits against the first time starter Aaron Blair, who has not had a whole lot of room to operate. And he throws one at the feet of Conforto, ball one. Whenever you're a hitter in this situation, Gary, where you can get a close ball game and you can put a hurt on a pitcher, loved to go one and zero, missing with a breaking ball. Now you got him. He's missed with a curveball. You didn't go fishing. You can pick your pitch here. Pressure's on the pitcher. Now it's even better. Well, the Mets, while they've been hitting home runs, have not been hitting with runners in scoring position. 195 as a team, last in the National League. Blair has thrown a first pitch ball to each of the last six hitters. He signed that he's starting to wear out. 2 0 to Conforto, and Michael pulls one foul. Now the Mets have hit nearly 55% of their runs have scored by the home run this year. It's the highest percentage in the major leagues. They were power hitting team last year top 10 in percentage of runs via the home run but this year off the charts Conforto takes one the other way foul and it's two and two well curve ball let him off with down and in ball one a change up ball two two and oh change up and then he threw a fastball there so still even count. I like the hitters' chances. Granderson at third, Cabrera at first with one out. Tie game sixth inning. I think he wants a changeup. 2 2. And Conforto drills it to right field. Marquez is back, and it's over his head. Hops into the crowd, a ground rule double. Granderson comes in with the lead run. Michael Conforto with his second RBI of the day, and the Mets are up two to one in the sixth. You're asking a young pitcher to make a change up in a tight spot, even though that's his second pitch. He's supposed to have a good one. This is not Triple A here, right down the middle. Good hitting by Conforto, stayed back. And it's uh, fortunate for the Braves, even though they're still in trouble here. Well, that's the last pitch Aaron Blair is going to throw today. His family giving a supportive hand as he leaves. He pitched very well today in his big league debut, but he will leave trailing two to one. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Blair out, Ogando coming in. We'll be right back.
Veteran right hander Alexia Gondo on in relief for Atlanta. Former All Star with the Texas Rangers last year in Boston. Infield in, second and third and one out. Lucas Duda at the plate. And he takes a strike. Lucas had a base hit to left center his last time up. Mets have regained the lead after the Braves tied it in the bottom of the fifth. One out walk to Granderson, an advancing hit for Cabrera and Michael Conforto with a booming double to drive in the run. Now the Mets looking for more with Duda. Slices one foul. Well, if you're 0 2. Wondering why Freddy Gonzalez, the manager of the Braves, did not intentionally walk Duda with Walker in the on deck circle is with the open base, set up a double play here is that Duda's more of a strikeout than Walker, and Walker's red hot. So pick your poison here, and I, I agree with Freddie 100%. You got to roll the dice here, but Lucas with a chance to bust this game open. Another piece of that is that Ogando's control can be flighty. He's always been uh, the guy who would walk four per nine innings, something in that neighborhood. That's one thing Lucas has done very well this year. He's gotten that runner in from third, three out of three. But he's going to have to do it here behind in the count. Ogando well, spent five years in Texas. A couple of those years as a starting pitcher, but mostly out of the bullpen. He was a, an all star as a starter in 2011, won 13 games that year. Mm, he's had two pitches to rip, and he's fouled them back. Gosh, you just can't get that, let that pitcher get away with that. Sometimes it happens. You got to just be, just crave these situations right here. You're Chance to really bust the game open right latter stages of the way go. Duda has two career at bats against Agondo and he has two hits. It's this one out to center. That'll get the run in. Malik Smith back as it lined up near the warning track. Cabrera tags and comes home to score. It's a sacrifice fly for Lucas Duda and he gets that runner in from third again. It's now three to one New York. Big run to drive in right there. Gives the Mets a two run cushion. Well done. Breaking ball. Yes, sir. Tried to back dorm on little drop on the outside corner. Conforto play in front of him. He attacks up. Nicely done. All good. Mets playing real well. And now they'll walk Neil Walker. And pitch instead to Wilmer Flores has really been struggling. So Neil Walker. Who had not drawn a walk this year before last night now has his second. Elias um, gave us an interesting stat on Walker, who uh, <laughs> was tickled pink to finally draw a walk last night. It had been so long. Went 63 plate appearances into the year before he drew his first walk. The only position player who went further into his Mets career without a walk was the notorious hacker Sean Dunstan, who never drew a walk in 97. Played appearances as a Met. In fact, Dunstan had the longest streak at the start of his Mets career without a walk. Walker was second. You know who's third? And he's here today. It's Jeff Francoeur. Oh, of course. That wouldn't surprise you either. I wouldn't be on that list. See, unlike Dunstan and Francoeur, Walker's not a hacker like that. He's a guy who you know, he'll draw 50 walks a year, but it just uh, it was quirky that he hadn't drawn a walk before last night. Now Flores, first and third and two out. And he goes after a high fastball, nothing and one. Nothing's coming easily for Wilmer right now. He's 0 for 2 today, 1 for 19 to start his season. Getting the start at third base today with David Wright getting the day off. Alexi Agondo now 32 years old. He had the big year in with Texas in 2013. 18 starts that year. Seven and four. 
big tall drink of water it 6'4, 200 pounds slender. Kevin Plowecki would be next. Mets have scored twice here in the sixth to regain the lead. Both the runs charged to Aaron Blair is responsible for one more. One two to Flores there goes Walker it's hit foul down the right side. Blair went five and a third allowed six hits the three runs so far walked two, struck at only one. After fanning ten in his last minor league start. Again Walker runs and Flores strikes out to end the inning. So the side retired but the Mets played a pair. Conforto and Duda with the RBIs. Three to one New York going to the bottom of the sixth. Board brought to you by Toyota. Two more home runs for Anthony Rizzo, who now has eight for the year. Cubs lead the Reds nine nothing in the sixth. The red hot Michael Franco with another RBI. Phillies on top of the Brewers earlier, trying to go to a ten game to a over 500 for the year. And you see some of the games later on today. Well, that Rizzo's a player, isn't he? Donis Garcia takes a strike from. Jacob DeGrom who has the lead back as he works the bottom of the sixth Garcia two for two two singles to center field now six for eleven in the series Braves haven't had trouble racking up hits they had ten hits in each of the first two games of the series Jim Henderson first man up in the Mets bullpen this will probably be the final inning for DeGrom his first start in 16 days. At 70 pitches for the afternoon. AJ Pruszynski on deck, and then Kelly Johnson for the Braves. Mm. Just a bit outside. Did we uh, did we forget about the Nationals on our National League scoreboard? That was weird. What is going on their plan? They're tied 1 1 in the fifth with the Twins. Oh, I guess since they're playing an American League team, it doesn't go on our National League scoreboard. Garcia strikes out. Third strike out of the day for DeGrom. Well, we'll mention that Matt Dendecker, batting leadoff for the Nats today, hit a leadoff home run in the first inning. He's found a home there. I'm glad for him. Happy, very happy for him. I liked his swing. He kind of got lost here. Do you think they'll keep him when Ben Revere comes back from the deal? Because they like Michael Taylor and he was getting most of the playing time. It's hard to keep uh, 
Taylor off the roster. Krasinski bounces one foul. It's my first iced coffee of the season. Really? Yep. It's been warm a, enough for it. You've been a holdout. 0 2 from DeGrom and a check swing foul ball. Pierzynski still looking for that 2,000th base hit. He's 0 for 2 today after getting to within one of that mark with three hits on Friday night. And he pulls one just foul. Rahm has given up seven hits, all singles. Hasn't walked a batter, struck out three. Certainly not at his sharpest today, but plenty good enough. Again, the 0-2, and the curveball bounced on the right side. Big hop for Duda, and Grom covers two out. So two out and nobody on. Time to check out this date in baseball history. Frank Umont became the first. Major League umpire to wear glasses in a major league game. 1956. Used to be a taboo. Right. About umpires wearing glasses. It was seen as a sign of weakness. Well, we won't go into the cat calls, but the super chicken never used to in San Diego used to bring out the eye chart yes. to the umpires. <laughs> that was so hilarious. <laughs> well, that was long after Frank Umont. <laughs> Chicken was popular in the 70s and 80s. Oh my gosh. San Diego chicken was the the mascot who set the stage yep. for the Philadelphia finale. Set the stage for everybody. And I remember Max Patkin, the clown prince of baseball, who used to tour around the minor league parks. In that old beat up out that beat up uniform. Yeah. And he'd get behind the first baseman and you'd throw ground balls to the infield and he'd mimic you right behind you. Kelly Johnson flies one down the line foul. One two coming. A little nubber. That'll stay fair. And Wilmer Flores with the bare hand play and just a shade too late. Boy, nice play by Wilmer. That ball had such spin on it to stay fair along the line. And Wilmer somehow was able to bare hand it and make that a close play. You know how hard it is with the sidewinder to get to get your fingers on that ball in your hand and grip that with that kind of spin, that kind of English? Really a nice play. Nice stretch by Lucas. Well, Terry Collins is on its way out to the mound. And he's going to take the temperature of Jacob DeGrom and took the ball. He's going to take the baseball as well. Job well done by DeGrom. He goes five and two thirds innings, 82 pitches in his first game in 16 days. And he'll hand it off to the bullpen to try and get the final 10 outs. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. We'll be right back to Atlanta.
Jacob DeGrom's work done after five and two thirds innings. Might have survived the sixth inning, but a two out number of an infield hit for Kelly Johnson chases him out of the game after 82 pitches, and Jim Henderson will come on in relief. Henderson faced one batter on Friday night, gave up a base hit to Adonis Garcia. Here comes in to face Chase Peterson, who fouls off his first offering. Flores did everything he could have possibly done on this play. And a very close play at first base, but Johnson able to beat it out. It would have been a beautiful play if he had completed the out, a little slower runner. But nonetheless, well done. Peterson singled and scored the only Atlanta run in the fifth inning against DeGrom. And Henderson misses up and away. Ball on a strike. Rom threw 82 pitches over five and two thirds, allowed eight hits, just the one run so far, no walks, three strikeouts. It's too bad he couldn't finish the inning. I guess he's on a pitch count. Well, they said 85. He threw 82, so he's right at that. Anderson goes upstairs to get ahead on Peterson one and two, and you have to figure next time around, Degrom will probably be able to go a, a full 95 to 100. And next start will be against the Giants next weekend. And I think all in all, a nice performance, a nice outing for for Jacob. Yeah, just a relief more than anything else. Remember, he left his last start with concerns about that lat muscle. <laughs> Anderson spikes one, and it's two and two. Nicely blocked by Polecki here. There you go. Got the gray chest protector on. Something camouflaged back there. Hmm. Blue camouflage. Mm. Strike three call. Peterson caught looking on the fastball, and so Henderson comes in and gets the out he's asked to acquire. And Jacob DeGrom finishes a successful outing in his return to action. Tomorrow night, the Mets open a series with the Reds. Last time the Mets saw the Cincinnati Reds, well, you remember, last September in Cincinnati, Matt Harvey pitched, Lucas Duda slammed, and the Mets clinched the National League East title for the first time since 2006. And now the Mets and Reds will re engage tomorrow night. And for more on the Reds, let's check in with Steve. 
Well, Gary, the last time the Mets did see the Reds, they hit a couple of big home runs in that clincher. And even though it's at City Field this week, the same may be in store. The Reds, three home runs given up today against the Cubs. That makes it a season total of 34. They lead the major leagues. And as bad as the starting pitching has been, there's an excuse there. They have some starting pitching injuries. The bullpen has been absolutely horrible. An ERA of close to seven, by far the worst in the major leagues. A full point plus higher than the second worst team in the majors. Mm -hmm. J.J. Hoover, he was supposed to be their closer. He's already out of that position, though. A 19.5 ERA in eight appearances. They're mm -hmm. thinking of using the former Yankee, Caleb Cotham, as the closer, but he hadn't done all that well either. But um, Steve makes the point about injured starting pitchers. Homer Bailey trying to come back from Tommy John surgery. Anthony DeSclafani, Michael Lorenzen, John Lamb, all on the disabled list. The guy the Mets will face tomorrow night, Rysel Iglesias, is probably their best starter, but you know he's more suited to being a back of the rotation guy. So, uh, so they've got some, they've got some problems, and you know the Reds are another one of those teams like the Braves, the Phillies, the, the Brewers are in that category too. They're they're really retrenching for the future, and it's another one of those teams that the Mets need to. Make some hay against. Well, we looked at in spring training, we gazed at the April schedule, Gary, and said the Mets have to feast. Now they got off to the, stress, the slow start. I think a lot was due to the ESPN start of opening day. They had two days off, six days off in April, cold weather. Okay, now they're kind of getting into the swing of the season and playing the kind of ball we envisioned. Three and two to Plowecki leading off the seventh against Alexi Ogando, and he takes it low ball four, and the Mets have the leadoff man on. That'll get Juan Lagares to the plate with a runner aboard. Well, the Reds do have some offensive weapons led by Joey Votto, but Votto, like Freddie Freeman, is off to a, a poor start, hitting under 200. Well, they lost Todd uh, Frazier too to the White Sox. That's a big bat out of that lineup. Uh, Jay Bruce is having a better run right now. He had a terrible cut last couple of years. And the uh, shortstop Zach Cozart, who was hurt most of last year, off to a terrific start. He's hit 400 coming into the day. What's Billy Hamilton up to? Well, he's got a, a sore thumb. He's missed the last three games. So, uh, so that's of concern. So it's, it's really uh, Brian Price has got a really tough task there on the plus side as you look at last year when they lost 98 games mm. the uh, the third baseman a Eugenio Suarez 3 0 3 5 home runs coming into the day he's he's off to a terrific start. That is a ballpark to hit in too, much like Philadelphia it's a band box out in Cincinnati. Garris has walked in flight out 0 for 1. Eric Campbell has come out on deck. He'll bat for Henderson, who struck out the only man to face him. That's got a run in the first. Braves tied it in the fifth on Nick Marcakis' RBI hit. But the Mets came right back and regained the lead in the next half inning, scoring two in the top of the sixth. And ending Aaron Blair's big league debut. I believe we have a wave. It only seemed to have magic in the 80s at Shea Stadium. Get the curly shuffle in the seventh inning stretch. Well, that's because the magic was back. That's right. Catch the rising stars. Bring your kids to see our kids. <laughs> One and two to Lagares. If you want to go back far enough, there's there's metal the mule. <laughs> it's probably before your time. That wasn't before Charlie fin Finley's mule, was it? It was after. It's in the 70s. I thought it was kind of a mule who lived out behind the outfield fence. Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. I always liked when uh, then coach Joe Pignatano kept the old uh, go uh, vegetable garden out in the bullpen. The tomatoes. Yes. Sometimes those tomato vines made it hard to see the relief pitcher warming up in the Mets bullpen as they would 
obscure the vision from the opposing team's dugout, and that was by design. One, two, and Lagares chases the slider in the dirt. Second strikeout for Alexi Ogando, one down in the seventh. And now Eric Campbell will pinch it. Of course, uh, Charlie Finley's mule, Charlie at least had the. Um, he had the um, the thought to name the mule after himself. The mule's name was Charlie O. That's right. Had the green blanket over it, remember? With the A's of logo. Course. Green gold. Yep. <laughs> Charlie Finley always wore that uh, fedora, <laughs> much like Bear Bryant. The checkered. Uh, would you call it hounds too? Hounds, hounds too. Hounds too. Yeah. yeah. Campbell can't catch the high fastball, and it's 0 and 2. Eric Campbell, one for five on the season. His only hit came as a pinch hitter. Lewacki at first and one out. Granderson on deck. And Campbell chasing strike three. So back to back strikeouts for Ogando after the leadoff walk. Driver on the majors brought to you by the Lexus NT Turbo and Hybrid. Go beyond utility. Ah, oh, we found the uh, the Nat score. They are 1 1 in the sixth. Cubs have been pounding the Reds, who got no hit in the opening game of that series by Jake Arietta. And uh, the Brewers have tied up the Phillies 2 2 on a Ryan Braun home run. Double switch coming for Freddy Gonzalez. Jeff Francoeur is coming in. And so is Hunter Cervenka. Called the bullpen. York Mets baseball is brought to you by Modell Shop Modell Sporting Goods, your fan gear headquarters. Come on, Mets fans, you got to go to Moe's. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Jeff Francoeur in to play left field. He'll bat ninth, and the new pitcher, lefty Hunter Cervenka. The rookie, first time in the big leagues for this young man, signed by the Red Sox back in 2009. That makes six years in the minor leagues, but he hung in there. Here he is. 
no relation to the great Exene Servanka. Fill me in. Exene and John Doe were the wonderful co lead singers in the band X back in the 80s. Curtis Granderson takes Lowe inside some of the best rock and roll harmonies you've ever heard. I've never heard of X. John Doe and Exene Servanka. X, Under the Big Black Sky. I'll have to look it up. Get the album. Fourth of July. Great hit. Really? Is it punkish? It's a little new wave-ish, yeah. Because you like that. It, punkish yeah, no stuff. question, but it's uh, but the check out the harmonies. You'll love it. I will. Their voices blend just now. The letter X, not X, EX. Just just X. Not like an X. Not double. wife. Not X. The letter X. Not XXX. Just X. Granderson has singled and walked today. He scored two runs. <laughs> Mets three runs, six hits. The Braves one run and eight hits. Mets have done it without the home run ball today. Some good situation hit, situational hitting. A couple of sacrifice flies. And Granderson takes a slider for a strike from Cervenko. One and two. Cervenko originally drafted by the Red Sox. He was with the Cubs last summer. They released him. And the Braves signed him. Now his seventh big league appearance, and so far so good for Servenka. Two two coming, and Granderson strikes out to end the inning. So Servenka gets his man. Seventh inning stretch time in Atlanta on a Sunday afternoon, three to one New York. My 23 years in baseball, I am reminded of a statement I once read, and I quote, the way to fame is like the way to heaven through much tribulations. It had been for me to quote a very popular song, a long and winding road. Nevertheless, I have been extremely blessed in my lifetime I stand here today because God gave me a healthy body, a sound mind, and talent. The words of the great Hank Aaron during his Hall of Fame induction speech in 1982. Hank, who retired as the leading home run hitter in the history of baseball and considered by some to be the legitimate home run king. And he is immortalized throughout Turner Field, statue outside. Memorabilia inside. 
was a great player and there's his numbers his career well that's you're hired yeah the numbers speak for themselves don't they he was so incredibly consistent never hit 50 home runs in a season and yet hit 755 for his career hit 40 Frank Robinson was the one that never hit hit 500 home runs Frank but never hit 30 I don't think I could be wrong let me see Joel Frank never hit 40. I never at 40. Right? That's right. Thank you, Aaron. Hit 20 or more, 20 straight years. Imagine that. Hansel Robles in for the second straight day. The workhorse, Hansel, he's going to get some more action here. Big strikeout last night of Freddie Freeman. Early in that game when it was tight. It's probably don't have Antonio Bastardo for the second straight day. He worked two innings Wednesday, two innings Friday, and Terry Collins wanted to stay away from Bastardo today, as he did last night. So Robles gets the extra duty here in the seventh. Facing Malik Smith with Jeff Francoeur and Nick Markakis to follow with the Mets leading three to one. And Smith thinking about a bunt, takes ball one. Robles came in last night with a runner aboard, got a Fielder's choice from Castro and then the strikeout of Freeman. After the Mets had taken a four to one lead. You know, going back to Hank Aaron, uh, average hitter, power hitter, obviously. Over his 20 plus, uh, 23 year career, only he averaged 63 strikeouts a year. Smith pops up the bun and Plawecki. Trying to quickly spin and grab it, and just didn't have enough air under it. Hammer and Hank. Nice effort by Pawecki here. It's like a ballet dancer executing that little turn. Robles ahead one and two with Frank Cora on deck tries the quick pitch and misses high. I think that's the first time we've seen that this season. The Latroy that got him in so much trouble in Philadelphia last year. Well, got Larry Boa all bent out of shape. What's interesting though is not so much with Robles, but that we haven't seen the quick pitch from Familia this year. Because remember, he gave up. The home run in game one of the World Series to Alex Gordon on the quick pitch and was criticized for it. Something he had done all year very effectively. And I think, at least so far this season, it has disappeared from Familia's repertoire. And Robles runs the count full to Malik Smith. The Braves have had a ton of base runners in this game. They've had eight hits, but no extra base hits. And that's really been the story of this entire series and season for Atlanta. Smith pops one up. Lewecki gives a look, but it's back in the crowd. Consider this the Braves came into the day with an on base percentage as a team of 303, which is not great. Third from the bottom of the league. Their slugging percentage is actually lower than their on base percentage at 287, which is last in the league. Oof. And that's incredibly rare, even over a, you know, the short sample size of three weeks, that your slugging percentage is lower than your on base percentage. Walker comes in, and snags it at the chest, has to hurry to get the speedy Smith. And that's the first out. That kid can really get down the line. One out. Hustling down that line. Two hands, nicely done in front of the ball by Walker. Got that in between hop, tough hop. Now Jeff Francoeur just came in on a double switch. Frenchy had two hits in the game last night. They announced Francoeur and the fans got a nice rousing ovation. They love him here. Atlanta area native. His career got off to such a spectacular start with the Braves. 
And one of the players we were talking about who has returned to Atlanta like a prodigal son. Slider from Robles one and two. Well one thing you're doing when you're rebuilding and you really the general manager has to be very careful of the veterans that he brings in and veterans that have been on winning teams is that they've got to be a special breed. They have to be above the morass and really set an example for the young kids and not get discouraged. So it's incumbent particularly on Freddie Freeman even though he's 26 to hustle and and set the example on the field and it's not easy particularly when you played for winning teams in the latter part of your career a lot of guys have you know early in their career played on winning teams and then they on the back side they're playing for losers I was fortunate I played for the losers rebuilding teams early in my career the second half of my career for 10 years I was in I was in the hunt all the time it's fantastic Anderson picks off the line drive from Frank Hoor for the second out well when you sign veteran players to fill out your team who are placeholders and you know Frank Hoor and Kelly Johnson guys like that I would think that you'd want to get the right personalities there two guys who can stay upbeat and not get sucked down into the as you say the morass when you know you're going to have a losing season if you've got veterans on that team that are sulking and just going through the motions that's that's not what you want your young players to see mm -hmm. to be around do out and nobody on now Marcus who drove in the lone Atlanta run because I know you know the Mets have been in situations over the years not recently where they've had not only a losing team but a less than perfect clubhouse and they haven't wanted to bring young players into that up the middle from Arcacus his second hit of the day. So Another as single. The, so as the Braves continue to bring young players up I would think they would be happy to bring them into an environment where even if the team is losing you've got leadership in that clubhouse that can provide the, the right impetus and not drag those young players down. That's that's absolutely it because the young players are going to look up to the veterans there's just no doubt about it. And if a veteran doesn't run the ball out it can it's a contagion. Here's Daniel Castro who's three for three today. Six for eleven in this series. Speaking of young players. Twenty three year old Castro again to play every day since he got called up. Been playing mostly second base getting a shot of playing shortstop today with. Eric Ibar struggling so badly getting the day off. Nine hits now for Atlanta, all singles. And slider in for a strike to Castro, one and one. Jacob DeGrom went five and two thirds in his return to action, allowed one run and eight hits, no walks, three strikeouts, 82 pitches. So Jacob's ERA through two starts is a spiffy 1.54. You know, if you go back to the day that DeGrom made his major league debut, it's a little less than two years ago. Came to the big leagues May 15th of 2014. His ERA is the fourth lowest in the major league since he arrived. Only Clayton Kershaw, Jake Arrieta, and Zach Greinke have lower ERAs. And that continues this year. I mean, that's amazing when you think about it. There's the uh, box score brought to you by Land Rover for the Braves, and you see all those singles, but only just the one run. 29 hits in this series for the Braves, and just six runs. Only two extra base hits, both doubles. And Robles blows away Castro to end the inning. First time Castro has been retired today. Looked overmatched on that fastball. So a scoreless inning for Hansel Robles sends us off to the eighth. Still three to one New York.
Baseball is brought to you by the Blue Cash Everyday Card from American Express. Time Warner Cable brings you the line score. Mets got a first inning run. Braves tied it in the fifth. Mets immediately regained the lead in the sixth. And now we're on to the eighth with as Dribble Cabrera to lead off against Hunter Cervenka. Cabrera two hits today both singles to right field now he turns around about right handed for the first time and Cervenka skips one in for ball one and the Mets have not faced a whole lot of left handed pitching so far this year in fact Cabrera's had only six at bats right batting right handed this year six of his 62 Mets have only faced one lefty starter this season through their first. 17 games. They'll face another righty tomorrow, and then finally their second lefty Tuesday night. They face Brandon Finnegan of the Reds. So just one lefty in the first 18 games of the season, and it's quite a dearth of left-handed pitching. When the Mets have faced lefties, they found them to their liking. The Mets came into the day with a team batting average of 3.05 against left-handed pitching. As opposed to 242 against righties, but obviously far more at bats against the right handers. Cabrera lifts one to right center. Back in the gap, Marcakis with Smith, and Smith makes the catch at the edge of the track. One away. Play of the game brought to you by Models, your fan gear headquarters. This was the first out of the game with first and third. Jace Peterson making that diving catch. In foul territory, it was the first out of the game. It was also the first run of the game as Curtis Granderson trotted home on the sacrifice fly by Michael Conforto, who also drove in the Mets' second run with a long double to right field. So Conforto one for two today. And now facing the lefty, Cervenka, who again skips in a slider, ball one. Conforto has gotten these. Periodic at bats against left handers in a different situation. Terry might have batted for him, but with Cespedes unavailable, Conforto stays in. Good fastball up and in. Good cut by Conforto. Oh, this kid, I tell you what, I like what I see. Mucho. Just love his swing, love his approach, love all visit bats. I'm being asked why. Folks, you need you need me to really explain it to you. I love his swing. He stays level. He's got a good eye at the plate. He stays in on left handers. This is a hard thrower right here. He just fouled back an up and in fastball. A great cut. It's two for six against lefties this year. And he fights that one off. Boy, they are really giving him the third base line, Gary. Uh, this is the we've seen a lot of teams play him with the, with the heavy shift over to right field, not the Braves, but boy, they're just giving him that third base line and a big chunk of that hole. And Conforto's capable of putting it there, but they got Francoeur out there in left field playing on the lines as if he's an off field hitter. He hit a fly ball down that left field line his first time up today. Here's your Mets box score brought to you by Land Rover. Two RBIs for Conforto, one for Duda. Mets have gone without the home run ball today after hitting 23 in the first eight games of this road trip. Most home runs in an eight game stretch in Mets history. In fact, it's a stretch that only one other big league team's had in the last 10 years as Conforto takes the breaking ball for strike three. Well, he dropped a hammer on him there. After all those fastballs, he drops a yellow hammer on him. It just started out inside and froze him. It wasn't a great curveball. If he had stayed in and pulled the trigger, he would have ripped it. We've all done that. But it just froze him. So two out of nobody on now Duda who has a single and a sacrifice fly today one for two. And Lucas takes outside. 
Oh, well, it's bark in the park day. Oh, and that's, that's as right. Small a bark as you can find. His big little, ear, big ears though. Little short-haired Chihuahua. Little barkers. Yappers. Get the dog a taco. One and one to do that. Matt, what kind of comment is that? Just because it's, it's a Chihuahua, it no, it's tacos. It's a reference to the commercials for the the chain of Mexican fast food restaurants. <laughs> you might have seen them. They were all over TV. They <laughs> featured a Chihuahua. <laughs> I mean, if I saw a white dog with a black eye patch, I'd probably reference Spuds McKenzie. Yes, you might. Huh? Remember, yo, yo quiero. <laughs> Here's the one, two, and that's mm. off the plate. Two and two. If there's a Great Dane in the ballpark, I'll reference my own dogs. Your own dogs. Yeah. That's right. You got the big boys, the girls. Girls, excuse me. You like the, you like females. All your dogs are females, right? Duda hits one past the mound, but Castro playing right beyond the bag and throws him out to end the inning. So Cervenka's face four and retired them all. Yes, it is a dog day afternoon in Atlanta. <laughs> Mets with a 3 1 lead in the eighth. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by the Lexus NX Turbo and Hybrid Go Beyond Utility. It's the best way to start your weekday. Join Suki, Scott, and the Pix 11 news team with breaking news as it happens. Linda Church has the weather and Caitlin Monte's traffic reports from 5 to 9 on the Pix 11 morning news where every story hits home. Jerry Blevins will pitch the eighth inning for New York. Well, the left handed specialist has been spot on this year. The ERA is a little deceptive. He's got he's been in some spots where he needed to get outs and he's got the outs. I'll get a couple of tough lefties in this inning with Freeman and Pierzynski bracketing Garcia. Freeman 0 for 3 today against Jacob deGrom and Levins runs one inside. With Antonio Bastardo not available for the second straight day because of a little overwork. Blevins gets the eighth inning. And Freeman fouls off the curveball one and one. Jim Henderson retired his only batter. Hansel Robles worked a scoreless seventh after DeGrom went the first five and two thirds. Freeman three for seven in his career against Blevins. Who struck out his only batter on Friday night, his only appearance in this series. 
And the curve ball pulled foul. One and two to Freeman. Well, this is a tight ball game. Two run lead here. Just kind of moseying along here, putting you to sleep. But this game is very much not in, well, it's just not in the bag, that's for sure. Two and two to Freeman. Well, you know, the Mets have been. Uh, been dominating on this road trip for the most part. They haven't played a lot of close games. And this one doesn't feel as close right. as it really is. Exactly. It's almost like you feel it's in the bag, it's like it's an eight to two game, and it's not. Full count to Freeman. And part of that is because the Braves just have not been hitting for any power at all. You don't feel like there's a threat that if they get a man on, that, you know, next guy can tie the game. They've gone a dozen games without a home run, but <laughs> it's going to happen. Some point, somebody's going to pop one. So Levins would be well advised not to let Freeman get on. Three-two, curve ball hit in the air, right center field. Closing on it is Lagaris, and he gets there for the out. Well, Freeman, who's been struggling, big wide spread. Look at the hitch downward. Let's see the contact. He's just not hitting with any authority right now, it seems like. Here, here's Adonis Garcia, who's two for three today. Six for 12 in this series. Fouls are back this way, just to our right. And to our left in the booth next to us is the Hall of Fame 300 game winner Don Sutton with the, one of the great curveballs I ever faced. They have a lot of 300 game winners hanging <laughs> around here. It's driven to center field Ligaris right there to get it two out. I was talking I was talking to Don who had one of the great curveballs with the, with the gray hair. Uh, Dodgers, Houston Astros, Milwaukee Brewers. Tre tremendous pitcher, control pitcher, threw hard, five pitches. Talked to him about Syndergaard. And I said, you know, Syndergaard says, and if they ask him how he throws that wicked slider, and then Syndergaard says, I don't know, I just throw it. And Don Sutton said, Good. Don't teach him, <laughs> let him do it. A.J. Przinski pops one up shallow left out goes Cabrera to get it side retired as Drupal Cabrera got a great break going back on that ball and made a tough play look easy and that gets Jerry Blevins through a one two three bottom of the eighth had it all the way.
next Pix 11 telecast Saturday May 7th Mets will be in San Diego coverage starts at 8 o'clock with Time Warner Cable pregame right here on New York's home for baseball Picks 11. You have that road trip with Ronnie you are not going to have the services of, of me. I have Wait, my first long break. Wait a second. We have an 11 game road trip 12 with the off days and you're not stopping it at all. I am usually you go to Denver. I do but Ronnie and I made a switch because my daughter is not going to be in the area with the grandkids and Ronnie's already out there and Ronnie said why don't I just do why don't I just do Denver coming back and then you can take Arizona from me in August when we go Arizona to San Francisco. So and Grandpa Keith is staying home. Uh, well yeah. <laughs> I think my oldest my granddaughter. Maggie has a dance recital and they can't come down all weekend. Big school event. Gotcha. Jason Grilly in to pitch the top of the ninth inning. Neil Walker leads off. His former Pittsburgh teammate swings and misses. Nothing in one. Walker had a hit against Grilly. Actually, flied out against him on Friday night. Ball and a strike to Walker. Flores and Pluecki to follow. Jerry's familiar getting ready in the Mets bullpen. Mets held familiar back last night. Remember, they had him up in the bullpen and then they blew the game open in the top of the ninth and saved familiar. Used Logan for red in the ninth inning, and that means Jay Reese will be that much more fresh for the save opportunity today. Flores waits on deck. Kevin Pluecki behind him. Nets have had just six hits today, but they've made them work. A couple of sack flies, an RBI double for Conforto, and so far that's been enough. With Jacob DeGrom in the bullpen, holding the Braves to just one run. Walker gets jammed and fouls it back two and two. So I stand corrected on Frank Robinson. In 1966, Frank hit. 49 home runs for the won, Orioles. Won the triple crown. Yes, he had the great year. Frank Cashin, was he general manager there for the Yes, he, yes was. he was. He made the trade. Mm -hmm. Milt Pappas for Frank Robinson. Milt, who just passed away a couple of yes, days ago. I saw that. Really strikes out Walker to start the ninth. You know the shame about Milt Pappas, he was a terrific pitcher. Had Great careers in both leagues, but always resented the fact that he did not get that perfect game. Remember uh, Bruce Freming, who was a rookie umpire at the time, called a close pitch, ball four, on a 3 2 pitch that would have ended his perfect game at Wrigley Field. Got the no hitter, but always felt as though he had been cheated out of a perfect game. And in fact, in, in many of the obituaries and the follow up stories on, on um, Milt's death, um, Bruce Fremming is quoted and, and had to defend himself all over again about the call that he made on that close bench. And it's a shame because you know Milt had a terrific career but it, but it was something that really stuck in his craw even late in his life. He pitched for these uh, Atlanta Braves. The latter part of his career. Of course that trade was made. Frank Robinson coming from the Reds. Flores pops one up. And Pierzynski back for a look, but that'll be in the crowd. Who was it? Who was the uh, Cincinnati executive who, DeWitt. who described Frank Robinson as an old 30? B Bill DeWitt Sr., I believe it was, who would ironically the owner of the Cardinals now is the, is, is the son, I believe, the, the DeWitt family. And said he was an old 30? Old 30. Yeah. And then the next year he won the Triple Crown in yeah. Baltimore. Yes, he did. <laughs> Take that. And of course, Frank wound up having a, a very long career, played you know, well into his 30s, and was player manager at the end of his career in, in Cleveland, and wound up with 583 home runs. One and two to Flores. Flores 0 for 3 today, 1 for 20 to start his season. Oh 
Looking ahead to the bottom of the night, the Braves will have Kelly Johnson, the pitcher spotted Malik Smith due up. With Jerry's familiar getting ready to face the Braves order. And looking to secure a sweep for the Mets before they head home. That's trying to finish off what would be a seven and two road trip if they can get the win today. Jason Grilly back on the mound this year after blowing out his Achilles last summer at age 39 able to continue his career. A proud Seton Hall Pirate delivers the 2 2 and Flores fouls back the breaking ball. Well, Wilmer 0 for 3 looking for his number two hit of the season here. It has just been a real struggle for him. Well, if you recall, he didn't get off to a great start last year either. Well, he's not getting the playing time this year. But last April he, would, he had not yet achieved full hero status. He gets a little more rope than he did last year. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming from Grilly to Flores. And a check swing tapper charging is Castro. Quick throw, close play, safe. So there's his second hit of the season not the way he would have drawn it up but Flores beats out an infield hit. Gosh I got to think the third baseman couldn't get there. It was the only chance to get Flores was for the third baseman to cut off the, sh the cut in front of the shortstop. Freddy Gonzalez is waiting to hear from his replay coordinator he might want to challenge this call. He's safe. Oh is he going to do it. He is. Well he figures it's the ninth inning. He's got a challenge in his pocket. It's use it or lose it. So this is our first challenge of the series. It is indeed, which means we can tell you that the play under review is brought to you by Mazda Driving Matters. Now, when you're going bad and you're one for 20 to start the season and you finally get yourself a hit, the last thing you need is to potentially lose that hit to a replay review. Um, well, yes. It does appear there that. Wilmer's foot is on the bag before he's gonna it goes in the glove. He's gonna have it. It's like that rain delay, you know, you don't get five innings in and you're almost close to making an official game and you hit a home run or driven in three runs. You don't want that, to, you know. This should be a fast one, you would think. Well, let's hope. It seems very clear that he was safe. Joe West and Mike Winters have their crews in the bunker in Chelsea. Nate yes. Joe. Got any new cowboy songs you're singing? You do know that the replay officials in the bunker are not allowed to listen to any audio. They're, They're not. They can't hear us. No, they don't. They don't want them to listen to anything oh, that, that might would influence make sense. their decision. That, that would make perfect sense. Yes. Call is confirmed. So Flores does get his second hit of the year, but it's very nice of you to do a shout out to Joe West, who is a noted country crooner. I, Joe was one of those guys I never argued with because he had a short fuse, and if you irritated him, uh, the close ones were going to go against you. I was very much the uh, diplomat when it came to umpires. Never forget Joe West during a fight between the Mets and the Phillies when Dennis Cook was pitching for the Phillies. Grabbed Cook off the pile and slammed him down to the ground. Took him out of action for a couple of months. Really? Oh yeah. I didn't even forgot that. Should be a fine. Well, if umpires get fined, you don't hear about it. They do, you know. Yes, they do. Sometimes suspended too. Kevin Pluecki over two in a walk, and he shoots one foul. Nothing at two. Coming up next on Picks 11, it's What Went Down. Mm -hmm. And next on SNY, WB Mason Post Game Live. Is what went down on picks related at all to Oh Yeah on SNY? 
because it feels like they by the titles they should be related. One being a spin off of the other. I'm not much of a TV watcher to tell you the truth. <laughs> Just off the plate. We'll have to check out what went down. Of course with the night games and predominant night games in baseball we can't watch all the. Maybe it's a godsend. Well you know that there's a DVR. There's Netflix. There's Hulu. I, understand. I know. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> All sorts of ways to consume your favorite shows. Plowecki hits it out to right field, and Markakis is right there. Two out. Well, the Mets on this road trip have dominated two of the lesser teams in their division. They won two out of three from the Phillies. They're going for the sweep of the Braves. And going into the season, you figured that the Mets and the Nats, and to a lesser extent, the Marlins, were going to have to beat up on these two lower teams who were. Clearly not in it to win it this year. So now you've seen the Braves and Phillies for three games. What do you think of what you've seen? Well, I miscalculated on the Phillies. I think they're a better ball club than we thought. Uh, they've got some young talent in that starting rotation. They've got a couple good hitters. They need, they got to pick up on the offensive side uh, and their bullpen. Uh, but the Braves here are a major facelift right here. This is uh, this is not a good ball club. Well I, I'm with you I, I think that especially when you look at the young pitchers in the Phillies rotation with Aaron Nola having come up last year and Vince Velasquez having joined their rotation after the trade from Houston that gives them two guys to build around. I, I mean we saw Aaron Blair for the first time today I don't think he's quite on that level and you haven't seen anybody yet at least in this Braves rotation that they can build around. We know one thing they've got a whole basket full of uh, first round picks that they traded for. Mm -hmm. Two and one to Ligaris. Well, there are their top five prospects. They got uh, Blair and Swanson in the trade with Arizona. They got Sean Newcomb in a trade as well. We saw Ozzy Albius in um, spring training. He looked like he's going to be a terrific player but he's still well down the food chain. So it's going to be a while. I mean, they're they're hoping to be a a better team next year when they get to their new ballpark in suburban Atlanta. But it's going to take a few years for John Hart and company to execute the kind of rebuild that they're trying for. I guess the question ends up being, what can the Mets? Hope to achieve against these two teams, the Phillies and the Braves. How much do they have to win? Because, you know, the Nats are going to be playing the same schedule and trying to beat up on the same teams. Well, it's the same old adage, right? You play 500 against your your top division teams and you beat up on the second division teams. You've got to take advantage of this squad. And remember, Miami came in here. Nice play by Freeman. Low throw, but handled by Castro, and they get the force to end the inning. Miami came in here and got swept by this brave team. Mm -hmm. Jerry's familiar on call as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Mets looking for the sweep up three to one.
Pets baseball is brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond. By Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. By your local Toyota dealer, come test drive the all-new RAV4 Hybrid Toyota Let's Go Places. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. By Heineken, open your world. And by Nissan, choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Well, that's three outs away from a sweep in Atlanta. And the final three outs, the responsibility of Jerry's familiar. Well, J.R. Reese is perfect so far this year, four and four, but he really hasn't, in my estimation, really gotten into that groove yet. He's kind of getting there. Kelly Johnson leads off the last of the ninth. Johnson one for three, an infield hit his last time up. Eric Ibar is on deck to pinch hit, and then Malik Smith for the Braves in the last of the ninth. Atlanta trying to avoid falling to four and 14 on the season. They lost their first nine. They won their next four and now in danger of losing five in a row. And Familia behind two and oh. This is what I'm talking about with Familia. He's just all over the place sometimes and just hasn't he used to pound the strike zone last year. He just hasn't found his groove yet. There's a strike. Meanwhile, in Washington, it appears that Dusty Baker is starting to push his starters to go a little bit deeper into games. Might have cost him today. Steven Strasburg gave up a three run homer to Brian Dozier in the eighth inning. And the Twins lead the Nationals four to one. That's lined to the left field, and Kelly Johnson starts the bottom of the ninth with a base hit. So the Braves will get the tying run to bat. Second hit of the day for Kelly. Sinker ball pitcher, left hand hitter. That's what you do. You take him the other way. Ball was up too. Interesting call for Freddy Gonzalez here. He's got only one left-handed bat on his bench, and that's the switch hitting Eric Ibar, who's really been struggling. He's got a guy on the bench in Drew Stubbs who's got some power, who might be able to tie the game with one swing, but he's going to go with Ibar instead. Ibar 0 for 8 in this series. Starting the first two games, getting the day off today. Ibar hitting just 138 for the year. Tying run at the plate, nobody out. And Ibar fouls off the first pitch fastball at 97. Malik Smith, another guy without much power, waiting on deck. Behind him is Jeff Francoeur in the nine hole. And Ibar hits a potential double play ball. Oh. And I don't know what Cabrera was thinking. I thought he had a play at second he base, sure but did. turned it down. Wow. You got to keep the double play in order. Had the easy force for the easy out, getting the lead runner. You can see it right here. Maybe he just thought it was hit too slowly, no. but you can see there he had plenty Please. of time to plenty. get it to Walker. Absolutely. I don't know what he was thinking there. I mean the, that run is of no consequence but it does take the double play out of order. Malik Smith the batter with Johnson at second and one out. Corners have to come in because he's always a threat to bunt. And Smith breaks his bat. Tough play against his speed. He got him two out. So two broken bats in a row for Familia and Cabrera able to throw out the speedy Malik Smith two away. Nice play by Cabrera coming in on the run. Has no other option but to come on the run with the speedy Smith. And so the Braves are down to their final out of the afternoon with Jeff Francoeur coming up. Frenchy came in in a double switch lined out to right field and is only at bat in the seventh. Two out Johnson at second. And Frank Cora takes a slider down for ball one. Nobody throws him first pitch fastballs anymore. 
If Frank Cora can keep it going, Nick Markakis, who has two hits in this game, and the only RBI for the Braves, would be next. One oh from Familia and a fastball strike one and one not guarding the lines here due to off the line tying around the plate outfield very deep and toward left against Frank Cor. Got to play no doubles in this spot. Hit the other way, a base hit for Frank Cor. Johnson being waved around third. He'll come in to score. Jeff Frank Cor with an RBI single, and the Met lead is trimmed to three to two. So it's not over yet. Well, just keep the line moving here. Don't try to hit the two run home run. You got a tough pit hanging slider. And this is what's worrisome to me about. Familiar. He gives him. He's been giving up runs and hits. Well, Familiar's now worked eight and two thirds innings this season and given up 12 hits. Yes. We'll get a pinch runner. Drew Stubbs will run for Frank Corey at first, carrying the tying run. Stubbs, a guy who once stole 40 bases in a season, and uh, Familiar not all that adept at holding runners. So we'll see if the Braves try and chance a stolen base attempt here with Marcakis coming up. And their best hitter basically up right here with Freeman struggling and he's been great with runners in scoring position drove home a run in the fifth. So they'd love to get Stubbs to second base for him. We'll see if that's the way they go about it. Marquez is two for four today. Braves have 11 hits in this game all singles. And Marquez chops one slowly tough play Cabrera bare hands can't make the play and everybody's safe. An infield hit for Marcakis, and now the tying and potential winning runs are on base for Atlanta. Third hit of the day for Marcakis, the third slow ground ball of the inning. Third bleeder. And nothing you can do there. Tough chance. And all of a sudden, this is dicey. Well, I'm not sure that. That uh, Cabrera was going to be able to throw him out, even had he been able to come up with the bare hand pickup. Agreed. So now, Stubbs, the tying run at second, Marcakis, the potential winning run at first, and Daniel Castro, who has three hits today, coming up. That is a dozen hits now for Atlanta, including three in this ninth inning against Familia, who's trying to stagger to the finish. Castro faced Familia Friday night and drew a walk. Two on, two out. And Castro going after the sinker, nothing in one. I got to guard the line here. The outfield playing to the opposite field. Granderson really in tight. I don't want to give up a double here, and lose this ball game. Castro had three hits. His first three times up was overmatched. By Robles' his last time up, he struck him out with a fastball. Here's the 0-1. He gets jammed and rolls it foul, and now it's 0-2. So familiar with two good sinkers yes. to start that at bat. Absolutely. This one runs in on his hands. Not much you can do with that. That's wicked. That's what we'll, you want to see out of Familia. So now the Braves are down to their final strike. <laughs> oh, and two to Daniel Castro. Lifted along the right field line. Granderson was playing shallow near the sidewall, but he runs out of room. And Castro gets another life. Interesting that Granderson is playing so shallow. I know that Castro is kind of a slight guy. Yeah. 
5 11 190 pounds at best two home runs last year in 33 games for the Braves and I think what Granderson is doing here is trying to cover up for his arm. But that gap in right center field with Lagares playing shallow too is going to lose this ball game. If Castro could keep it going Freeman would be next. 0 2 from Familia. Ground ball walkers in front of it down to a knee and the ball game is over. Jerry's familiar staggers to the finish but the Mets complete the sweep of the Braves as Jacob deGrom gets the victory and is returned to action and the Mets fi finish off a seven and two road trip with a three two win. Well a day without their two starters a day game right and Cespedes on the bench.